It's a highly charged and emotional occasion. It always is. Pass records count for nothing as we approach 3.30 on All-Ireland final day. And now it's about producing your best form right here, right now. Barry Kelly is in charge, the man from Westmeath. As in the Leinster final, Galway are going to play from left to right for the opening half, hoping history will repeat itself. Barry Kelly just wanting the midfielders back in the middle and wants everybody else out of the uh, zone between the two 65s. Match finally gets underway, and straight away it's uh, Kilkenny with Brian Hogan across at left half back, trying to swing on that one. Ball still in play. JJ Delaney has moved out of position. A lot of switches and changes all over the park. For instance, I've noticed that Cyril Donnellan's got in towards an inside forward line, which includes David Burke, being marked by Tommy Welch and by Paul Murphy. Line ball, which TJ Reid's preparing to take. He was hampered by a shoulder injury in the last fortnight or so. That's a poor one. Straight to David Collins. Very number seven this afternoon. Back. Once again towards Brian Hogan, back in the middle this time. Diagonally across here, in over the head there of Colin Fenley. Picked up by Johnny Cohen, he cleared an awful lot of ball in the Leinster final. This time it comes straight here to Jackie Tyrrell, meant to be left corner back. But I think it's one of those days when the numbers will not reflect where the players are going to be playing. Exactly, they, as I said in the scene set, uh, the Kilkenny half forward and full forward line have switched. TJ Reid started out, has uh, gone in now towards the full forward and it looked like he was going to play out the field. Johnny Cohen staying inside and as you say, Kilkenny gone man for man, Tommy Walsh gone and Cyril Donlan, JJ Delaney has picked up Joe Canning, you have Kieran Joyce and James Regan, so nothing we didn't expect and they'll be moving around all over the place as the game goes on. Richie Power didn't have the best of times in the quarter-final against Limerick with the first few frees. Let's see what that does here. Held on to just about and then lost by Tony O'Gregan, picked up here by Henry Shefflin, hoping to impose himself. Ear Tanyan was after him, and Ear Tanyan's got it. 20 metres out from his own goal, helped out here by David Collins. Swept away by Damien Hayes. Operating around midfield right from the outset here. That's brilliantly taken by Tommy Walsh. Slipping the little hand pass here to Paul Murphy. Both of them back there around their own full back line. Comes to Walsh. Thought about drop hitting it. Finally fires it a good 50 metres back down the park. Across again goes Erla Tanyan here. Gets there first. Colin Fedley now playing the little hand pass off to Richie Hogan. Steadies himself. Hogan trying to get the opening point of this match, but he's uh, put it to the right of the post and he's missed the opportunity of doing that yeah Ger, what a frantic, frantic start some you know some great tackling what a catch here by Tommy Walsh going backwards but the pressure straight away on by the Galway forwards and put them under fierce pressure to clear it Earl Tanyan down injured there that seems to have taken a fairly heavy knock but you can see from the word go there as we look at Earl Tanyan uh, seek some uh, medical help that Kilkenny are trying to impose themselves on this match from the outset this time and not suffer a repeat of what happened here in the Leinster final. Yeah, Richie Hogan pulling there, a good bit away from the ball as well and got him across the ankle. And there you see Erlitania with the hurl in, clean, great disposition of Henry Shefflin there and the minute he got the ball he was surrounded and that's what Galway are going to try to bring that fierce energy and power to the game and they know they have the younger legs so, you know, but as you say, Kilkenny will be looking steady start and not to be, you know, Galway were out of sight after 15 or 20 minutes in the Leinster final, so they don't want that to happen today. Tanyan back into midfield again there with Andy Smith, and of course Damian Hayes round about the midfield zone as well. Was that out over the line? It was by David Burke. And uh, David Burke can plead his case here with the uh, linesman. David Kerwin, the linesman on this near side. Here he is, just stepped out and over. Tom Hellebert there, one of the selectors in the background. Line ball to Kilkenny awaiting the opening score of this match, almost four minutes gone. Paul Murphy. Kilkenny's today seeking a 40, 34th All-Ireland title. Held on there by Henry Shefflin, and he was being fouled. Virgil Moore got him. Yeah, great catch there by Henry Shefflin, and this is something that match up. Henry Shefflin is probably three, four inches taller than Virgil Moore, and you can see him there, great catch, and Virgil just got tangled up with him. So it's going to be Henry Shefflin who will take this one. Richie Power had the first one of the match. Henry with uh, 27 goals, 459 points in a wonderful career. And that's a, a very positive start for him. 
and Kilkenny are away and leading in this match four and a half minutes are gone well very often Henry Shefflin goes in to pick up somebody that the uh, manager would uh, feel is perhaps vulnerable in the opposing full back line it's interesting that he's been marked by Fergal Moore who is perhaps more one of the more experienced members of that uh, back line puck out by James Skehill up into the air went Cyril Donnellan breaks down for Damien Hayes onto it straight away trying to be a major factor in this match that's Tony O'Gregan up towards Joe Canning Trying to get on the ball early on, but look at the number of Kilkenny players surrounding him immediately, and one of them, Paul Murphy, coming across. He was being fouled, and it's going to be a free out for Kilkenny. Kilkenny mean business. Yeah, they do indeed. And you know, I think what this man marking job gives Kilkenny, we saw it against Tipperary last year and this year in the semi final, it gives them a focus straight away in the Leinster final. They didn't know who they were picking up, they were beaten. Now they just have a man to mark, stay with him, and straight away you can see the Kilkenny backs are much more comfortable. At the moment, it is uh, Joe Canning and it is James Regan who are in the inside forward line. They've been switching that around a little bit since the start of this match, keeping Kilkenny's backs on their toes. Richie Parr underhitting this one. Johnny Cohen comes across. Stands his ground there against TJ Reid, who's moved into the inside forward line from the very beginning of this match. Sent forward here towards David Burke on his hands and knees. Henry Shefflin back helping out. Paul Murphy, it's a real feature of Henry's play, the hard work he puts in. Up towards TJ Reid, runs on there. And that's Niall Donoghue coming across, facing his own end line. The one thing a back does not want to be doing, and he's carried it out of the end line. It's got to be a 65 for Kilkenny. Really good probing ball, that. Absolutely, and uh, Neil Dunham did well. He got it away from the danger area, and we saw Johnny Cohen before that sweeping across, and he's been a key man, and he's going to have to, you know, I think, cover. Kevin Hines has no experience, really, at top inter-county level at full-back, just apart from the last couple of games. So Johnny Cohen's pace is really vital in there. So once again, it's... Uh, Henry Shefflin, the man who's on the threshold of history if Kilkenny win this title. One point already from a free, this is the 65 now, and a pretty calm afternoon. What breeze there is is blowing behind Kilkenny for the first half, and Henry has put this one away to the left-hand side, and it's a, another missed opportunity, two wides now by Kilkenny. Yeah, I think it's, it's calm down on pitch side, but there's a swirling wind, as there always is in Crow Park, and you see the, f the flags high up are really buffeting around, and Henry definitely caught out there. It is very deceptive. James Skell trying to place his puck out now towards the centre-forward Niall Burke, who's so good in the air. But Paul Murphy has gathered another one and cleared it back down once again. In there, into that danger zone. Owen Larkin's in there, so too was Kevin Hines, and Hines has been fouled. And uh, that will do his confidence a lot of good to win that ball between himself and the very dangerous Owen Larkin. Absolutely, Jerry, I agree, which I think Owen Larkin very, very strong in the air, and Kevin Hines will be delighted just to get on the ball early and, and win a free out there. Larkin had a wonderful league final, of course, way back along, beginning of May, against Cork, but hasn't been quite as prominent since, although that goal he got against Tipperary in the semi-final would have been a big boost to his confidence. That's a huge one up towards Cyril Doblin, breaking it down, but there's nobody into it immediately. Galway trying to work hard, trying to get the possession, finally winning it, Joe Canning back there. Struck, this time by Andy Smith, and over the bar. Big, huge cheer, there's an enormous crowd from Galway at this final, and the teams are level a point apiece with eight minutes gone. Yeah, that's a huge score, you know, it's taken eight minutes, and Andy Smith, not one of the more noted men for scoring for Galway, took on the responsibility there and a super score off his right-hand side. Now he's only got a goal and uh, two up to this in this year's championship. Well, that might be one of the most important scores he ever gets because you know, it settles the team down. David Herity all the way down through the centre towards Richie Parr. Breaks loose, however. Real scrap for it in there. Eventually, it's Niall Donoghue once again. Plucky player blocked down this time by Richie Hogan. Into it immediately came some re resources there from uh, Tony O'Gregan. And the reinforcements didn't get that ball away as they should have done so. It's back in by... Kieran Joyce, probing ball in there, but straight to James Skehel. Skehel can steady himself here and drive it. Huge distance, way up the field. And interesting that Damien Hayes has moved into the inside forward line just to try and help James Regan here, trying to get it up onto his stick, pursued by Brian Hogan. It's Regan off as far as Canning, looking for latitude. He's made a lot of ground. He's scored a wonderful goal. How did he do that? Brought the uh, stadium to life. Ten minutes are gone, and Joe Canning has hit in his 16th ever championship goal. And Joe, what a goal! A great run by James Regan. But look at this after with Joe Canning. 
brilliant touch, great vision, and buried in the back of the net. What a goal, an absolute brilliant goal, and you know, a great player on a big day, and that's really now, that's the start of goal we wanted. What a goal. Well, that is an early statement of intent by Joe Canning and by Galway. 1-1 to a point, they lead. And that all came about, Kieran Joyce hit an aimless ball into the full back line, into the full forward line, and James Gettle was given all the time in the world. He launched the ball 100 yards down the field, ended up in the back of the net. David Herity fucking it out, right down to the middle again. An attempt at fucking that one by David Collins came to naught, but it comes back out as far as David Burke. And that goal should settle Galway. Up as far as Cyril Donnellan here. Two players going for it. Damien Hayes has it. That's under hit. Straight to Herity. About to be challenged here by Niall Burke. Stands his ground, gets it out as far as Brian Hogan. Into the middle of the field, intended there for Richie Hogan, but it's cut out instead by Joe Canning. He moved from full forward into midfield, and he's got another one. A score, a point by Joe Canning. A goal and a point now, as Galway lead by 1-2 to a point. Yeah, early stages, Jerry, but you know, missed, missed clearance there by Brian Hogan, and Joe Canning, just after scoring the goal, just drifted back out the field. Which is, I think that was marginal, I think that could have been wide, looking at the replay. Well, they got away with it. And Kilkenny now trying to assert themselves again here. TJ Reid, their only score so far has come from a free by Henry Shefflin. Back to Richie Power. Back now as far as the other Richie, Richie Hogan. And Richie Hogan has sent it flying away to the right-hand side, and another one has gone wide. And the huge Galway following here in Croke Park this afternoon, really enjoying this, and they've certainly enjoyed that goal there. After ten minutes of play by the great Joe Canning. Only yeah. 23 years of age. Just makes it look so easy, you know, a brilliant finish into the net and the run he made. You can see there the Galway subs getting in behind it and Galway will be delighted that they're creating that space now already around the field. There's a great sense of togetherness among the uh, Galway squad. David Collins trying to place it, playing at right half-back as he's been doing for most of this championship, very number seven, and the referee saw a foul there and it's going to be a free for Galway and uh, Michael Fennelly with a puzzled look at his face. Just the arm in there, yeah, sometimes you get away with him, but Cyril Donald, brave, down on the ball and won the free. And this free will once again be uh, taken by Joe Canning as the players take on some water. But that goal has certainly set up this final. Galway trying to do what they did in the Leinster final, come out, get in some early scores in the first half, get some confidence, get a lot of momentum going. This is a very difficult free, but this is a very good free taker. Joe Canning hitting it, he's measured it well.